The musician St. Vincent, a 34-year-old Texan whose real name is Annie Clark, is talking about body piercings. Though her outfit today includes such exotic items as a leopard skin onesie and a pink blazer made of some sort of wetsuit fabric, Clark doesn't have any outlandish piercings herself. She just has droll and strong opinions about them, as she has droll and strong opinions about a lot of things. Didn't it always make you laugh? Clark says, already laughing, softly, in the museum in London where we meet one summer afternoon, how people in the 90s who had, like, tongue rings? How? They'd always make some sort of comment, intimating that it made them, like, better at oral sex. That was the whole wink-wink thing, right? That a tongue ring meant they were kinda kinky. But then, I guess the challenge because they were constantly fidgeting with this gross thing in their mouth. I guess the challenge became, no one wanted to get head from them. She hoots with amusement, just loud enough to turn heads in the hushed museum. Conversation with Clark is like this, a bit unexpected, a bit arch, a bit sexy. She sometimes speaks so slowly and carefully it's as if she's reviewing individual words before committing to them. But, as with the lyrics of the songs she writes as St. Vincent, always inventive, always making disarming leaps between ideas, you can never predict where her thinking will travel next. Quickly the chat about oral sex gives way to the matter of her own death and her expectations of a brisk cremation. Before I know quite how, she's got me talking about an irrational fear of being buried alive. Get cremated, she urges. I asked Clark, who will soon release her fifth solo album, a follow-up to 2040's self-titled St. Vincent, why she suggested we meet in London's Welcome Collection, to combine our interview with a tour around the museum's collection of antique medical equipment. Clark peers with interest at a display of old enema syringes and explains that in every unfamiliar city, you should try to see something real and strange. It was something the Talking Heads frontman David Byrne once advised her about touring the world, and she's stuck to it ever since. So far I've enjoyed the kind of success where I might get a free appetizer sent to my table. But it's never a main that phrase, real and strange, describes. Clark's appeal as a musician, 